Hello, folks, and welcome to episode five of Modular Curiosity. Boy, look at this. That's a lot of modules up here. Well, today we are going to talk about sequencers. Sequencers are going to become, yeah, you guessed it, your new best friend. Uh, sequencers are a way to set up a melody or set of melodies that can be played back and repeated. Now, I've done the setup before the video here, and what I've done is I've set up uh, three different sequences, uh, which are just a major scale. There we go. Now, what the sequencer is, it has row one, row two, row three, and that's this row of knobs, or this row of knobs, or this row of knobs. And I'm kind of doing a modular synthesizer trick that I have row one going to this filter, row two going to this filter, row three going to this filter. And because I've turned the cutoff all the way down, it's basically acting like a volume control that you, I'm basically cutting off all frequencies of row two and row three. So let me start it again. We can hear what row two and row three are. So I cut that down, row two. Is the same major scale a third up. And row three is the same scale a fifth up from the root. So if I play all of them, Now, the time of the sequencer runs off of its internal clock. However, you will quite often want to synchronize this to drums or to other sequences uh, and such. So what I've done is I have my, my favorite little JW simple clock, and I'm going to take the clock output and put it here to external clock, and now when I hit it runs based on this clock, whereas this clock doesn't do anything. Now, I am running it through this little device here, and this is a quantizer. And here's why. These, well, let me, let, I'll tell you what, let me throw up a new... Let's see, a new VCO. And let's just put it right here. Now, if I change the frequency. It's infinitely variable and actually quite difficult to tune. I'm going to put this over there for the moment. If I have a quantizer, what a quantizer does is base anything that's and I used to say it wrong. I used to say quantitizer. I would add an extra syllable in the middle and it's found it's not right. What a quantizer does is it takes a slope of variables, say uh, in this infinite range of frequencies, and it breaks them into steps. And whatever frequency, whatever step is closest to this frequency, it will jump to that step. The nice thing about this quantizer is it's quantized to 12 steps per octave. In other words, all the chromatic notes, which mean I got to turn it very slowly so you can hear it. Your house going step by step. Now if I go quickly it sounds like it's still just sliding, but actually it's actually going to a very specific note. Because of that I have all three of these running to the end of a quantizer. And this, this uh, quantizer which is from I think it's 
I think it's ML. Yeah, it's the quantizer H bar. This has two per module. So I'm going to delete that. So by having two of them, I can quantize all three. And what that does is it means I don't have to infinitely fiddle with these knobs to get these intervals exactly in tune. They're all going to be within, within a particular note. And to test that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to one step. And now that's row one. And see if I go just a little bit. See, it's jumping between uh, between notes, which allows me. There we go. Which allows me to um, put things in tune. So I have each of these three going to, uh, let's see, going to the quantizer, going to the volts per octave of these VCOs, which are all tuned to exactly the same note because this is what's actually making those notes change. And that's going to a multiple, so I'm bringing all of them. Well, I'm sorry, I'm going to each of their own filter. The filter is coming back. And I was going to an ADSR, but it didn't work. Why did it not work? Well, because even though it says gate right here, whoop, control, there we go, we'll split it. When I started looking at it in the scope, look what I saw. It's not a gate at all, it's a trigger. You remember from the last episode, triggers are these immediate voltage spikes and then they drop. And we also remember that triggers don't work really well on an ADSR because the attack doesn't have time to move before the release triggers. So what I did is instead of using ADSR, I went to my other favorite module, the Rampage. There we go, so I could So I could set up an envelope. And that's driving my VCA. That's going through a little reverb just to make it sound cool. Pretty nice. Now, one of the things that you tend to do with sequencers, and one of the questions, one of the first questions I came up with, and in fact, uh, this question came up on the Facebook VCV Rack official forum, which, by the way, is a great group on Facebook. I very much recommend that everyone go there and just become, just join and, and listen to the great discussion. And one of the discussions that came up was a question on, hey, how do I either connect two sequencers or two different rows so that I play one row and then the next row and then the next row, or I play whatever's coming out of this sequencer and then whatever's coming out of another sequencer and whatever's coming out of the next. Well, the answer to that is a sequential switch. And the reason, the way this is going to work is we have this reset button here. And every time we hit the reset button, it goes back to the beginning. Now you might think, well, okay, big deal. That's not all that useful. It actually is. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the output, let's see, from, I want to make sure I'm doing this right. Let me turn these down and find the right one. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go to the input number one here. Yep, that's input number two. Input number three. And the output of sequential switch back to the input. Now you can see right now I'm on channel three. And every time I send a trigger or a gate to the step, it's going to switch. And I have it set to three steps right now, so it's gonna cycle between these three. Well, Let's see, there's a, there's a trigger button in one of these. There it is. So I'm going to say, um, I'm sorry, not to step, because step will control this. If I say up, click, click. So 
So I have these three different inputs, and this is an eight to one, so I have eight inputs, one output. There's also the inverse of this, which is one input, eight outputs, so you can send the signal to eight different things. So what I'm gonna do is I have to figure out how to make this step, this button, switch between row one, row two, and row three. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the gate down here of my first step. There we go. So I'm playing the first sequence, the second sequence, the third sequence. And because I have three steps set, it's going to just recycle back. If I had four, it would go to an empty output here, or an empty input, and it would just be quiet for eight beats. And when this runs, it comes back. Now another interesting thing is these lights down here, I could actually turn individual notes for the entire column off. Now you can hear the notes still playing. triggering this envelope with the notes that have this green light. That's pretty cool. Now, let me tell you a little story. I have a long, long commute. <laughs> I commute an hour into work every day and an hour back every day, so I spend two hours a day on the road. And because of that, I tend to I tend to have a lot of time to think about things. So I was listening to Rush uh, the other day and to the song Jacob's Ladder, and they have a sequence in that song which has a six-note sequence followed by a seven-note sequence. So six notes, seven notes, six notes, seven notes. And the seven-note sequence is exactly the same as the six-note sequence with one extra note. And I think, okay, so could I make it play one, let's see. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. But do it in time. Can I have it reset exactly right? So I thought, well, okay, let's play one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the seventh note, have the gate hit the reset. What happens? But I wanted to alternate that between six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. How would I do that? I thought, well, wait a minute. The answer is the sequential switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the cables. I'm going to have two steps. I'm going to have the seventh gate go to one, the eighth gate go to two, because what's going to happen is it's not going to play the seventh note. It's going to play the sixth note, and when it sees this gate, I want the output to go back to the, re the reset. So I want it to reset. So, so far, let's see what happens. Uh, well, first of all, I have to put something. There we go. Put something here so we can hear it. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Okay, so I have to switch it though between one and two. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same output, whoop, control, and put it to the up. If I started adding in the other notes, and maybe a little reverb.
And that is fun with sequencers. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, let's see, what should your assignment be for this episode? How about using sequencers? See what kind of interesting things you can do. Maybe randomly jump between row one and row two or hook up two instances of the sequencers and bounce back and forth between them or have one sequence play, then the other sequence play and bounce back and forth this way. Find new interesting things to do with your sequencer. And if you're enjoying this series, I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe because that'll help me out a lot. And uh, until then, stay curious.